hit, whoa, I've already hit the record button, I'm all over it, and I don't even realise it. Mobility number 29, and it's head to toe. As requested. Okay, so we'll start off. We're not even going to do the usual jazz. We're literally going to go head to toe. So we're going to get stuck into the neck. Now, you know the neck. You know the neck. Many angles in which we can stretch the neck. I'm going to be doing the ones that suit the most people and also, of course, suit me. Okay, most. That's, that's what's most important here. So if you... So if you... If you have... Lisa, your side on. <laughs> that's you. That's you. You're better. Right. Head to toe. We're going to be doing... <laughs> going to start with the neck. It's up to you. If you've been doing a few mobility classes, you know we can go 45 degrees. We can go off laterally to the side. We can look up. It's whatever you feel you need the most on. So stand up, relax the shoulders, and let's get stuck into it with a, with a neck. Oh, here we go. Right on time. <laughs> right, okay. Standing up tall. Lean into the side with the neck. Yep. So I'm stretching the neck out. I'm going to try and stretch out the upper trapezius here. These big muscles here. They don't just run here. They actually run down the back almost like a diamond shape. I'm going to grab my head and just apply a little bit of traction with the other hand, okay? Now, what I'm not doing is this. Okay, I'm not pulling myself off centre. I'm still standing up nice and tall, but I'm just going to gradually apply a little bit of force. And, of course, it's one night. We need to be sensible. Don't be doing too much. With this arm now, this is what we forgot. Put the arm behind. Put your arm behind your back there, okay? Brilliant. Good. So I'm just slightly leaning off to the side with the head. Good. And again, with this arm, I'm just putting it up my back as far as I can. Okay, now what I'm not doing is going to go like this. Wah! and get it right up there and cause that shoulder to start rounding, okay? So I'm showing you how not to do it. Standing up nice and tall, nice and proud, keep the shoulder blade together. Don't worry if you've just joined us, we've not really kind of started properly yet. <laughs> just the usual bump getting talked about. Good, so I'm just, I'm literally stretching my neck out. I'm going, I'm going off to the side, stretching out the upper trapezius, okay? So hopefully, I mean, most people just doing this one should feel like they're getting a good stretch. So I'm going to ease out slowly and just be careful. Shake out the arms, and then I'm going to do the other side. So arm behind and up the back if you're able to. If you're not able to get the arm up the back, just place it on your lower back. Put the arm up the lower back, up the lower back, up the back. <laughs> it's, be it's probably better tonight if you just copy what I do, not so much what's coming out of my mouth, because it's just garbage. So I'm leaning off. I'm leaning off. Oh, for goodness sake. I'm leaning off to the side. There we go. And I'm using my arm. To apply, to apply, to apply. A little bit of force. But again, that arm that's running up your back, I'm trying to keep that relaxed, okay? So head to toe, starting with the head. You must be relaxed, okay? Just always think about that. Is that shoulder completely relaxed? Am I hunched up? Am I fighting it? We don't want to be. What a racket out there, man. Sick. Right. <laughs> right, okay, this is your choice now. You can either go down with the neck or you can go up. I'm going to go up. Now, what you do with your arms is just all we're trying to do is lengthen everything out so that when we start looking up or looking down, we're already stretching out that area. So for me now, I'm going to put my arms behind my back and just push them down. Just push them down, and that's going to help maybe just get all this nice and nice. nice nice and lengthened, and then I'm going to look up. Now, you must, you must. If you are looking up, you must shut your mouth, okay? You have to shut your mouth. You'll feel the difference. If you open your mouth, all this, shorten. Shut your mouth, lengthen, okay? So shut your face, and you'll get a better stretch. So I'm looking up. I'm driving those arms down, but they're still fairly relaxed. Simple stretch here. Now what you can do is add a little bit of side to side. I'm doing these muscles because they often get forgotten about. And if you spend a lot of time looking down, sitting at a desk in a bad position looking down at your screen, cycling a lot, 
again, looking down, especially if you're one of those crazy road bikes. This gets tight, okay, this gets tight when it gets forgotten about. It's all forgotten about. And I'm going to ease out nice and slowly. Right, what's next then, seeing as it's a, uh, what's the name? I'm having a great night tonight. <laughs> Who's next for it? Go on then, what are we having? Shoulders, shoulders. Yep, shoulders. Right, okay, you've got options. We're going to do the interlocking finger one. In fact, we are. We're just going to do that, right? Forget it. I'm not giving you too many options. Otherwise, this is going to take all night. Sit down. Okay, and then I'm going to get my arms behind my back. I'm going to interlock my fingers so that my palms are facing away from my body. And then I'm just simply going to drop down onto my elbows. <coughs> and from here, I'm going to shift my bum. Shift my bum away from me. Keeping my chest nice and proud, and straight away you should feel a decent stretch right in here. Okay, so I'm going to have to come out of it. Right in here, right in at the shoulder, okay? We should be feeling that. Now, if you're not, you're trying not to look like you're sat in a sun lounger, okay? Well, you could be. You could be sat in a sun lounger, but someone's came along and shoved a flagpole up your ass, okay? So now, we're like this. Yep. So I'm not lying chilled out. I'm now pushing... My chest up proud. And again, we should be feeling it. We're trying to stay fairly relaxed here. But I'm trying to keep my chest proud. And then to enhance the stretch, just shift the bum a wee bit more, further away from the body here. Okay, stop laughing at me. Okay, let's go. Beautiful. So we're relaxing, or as best you can, while I'm talking. Can't imagine it's the most relaxing thing coming across, but hey up. What else? What else we're going to do? So again, it's quite easy to just to sit in this one and let your mind wander and forget about the purpose of this. So make sure you're actually trying to get a good stretch on. So again, nice proud chest. And then shift the butt a wee bit more. Good bit of stretch out. Again, if you're doing the likes of, I don't know, crab kick-ups, crab toe touches, um, those tabletop loop bridges, a lot of people get a lot of tightness in this area. Again, I'm trying to point my eyes down there. So this is a good one for fixing that because that's probably where we're going to be getting it. Now, we're going to get into the shoulder and the chest now, predominantly the chest, but we're still going to feel it. So we're going to ease out of that one. This is my new favorite one. So I'm down. I'm going to get my arm out, 90 degrees. Again, if you've been doing this a few times now, you're probably quite familiar with where you prefer your arm, okay? Generic, out 90 degrees to the body. You might find it's a better stretch if you just have it slightly up. But again, you play around with that. And then, <laughs> and then just simply, this is important now. See the palm of the hand? Keep the palm of the hand firmly on the ground as you rotate towards it. Okay, so don't let that palm twist. Now, what I must try and do is keep that shoulder in the joint. Okay, I don't want to start rolling my shoulder. I'm trying to keep the shoulder blade together. Now this is where it just looks like I'm in a weird position and that's because I kind of am. All I'm trying to do is roll back on that arm while keeping the arm completely relaxed, okay? At no point should I be fighting this stretch, pushing the arm into the ground. So it's pretty obvious how we enhance this stretch. Simply try and roll closer to the arm and this is where you have to do it in increments just like any other stretch would do. It has to be done gradual. Because if you just dive straight in at the deep end, you'll be severely uncomfortable and I guarantee you will not be relaxed. You'll be fighting it. So again, it might just look like I'm holding this stretch, but I am. I would say every 10 seconds, just trying to go a wee bit further. Again, be sensible. Don't be ripping your shoulder out the socket. Okay, we don't want that. That's taking it too far. So here, I'm just trying to go more and more. Where are you feeling it? Now... I'm answering that question for you now. You should be feeling it roughly in the same place in your shoulder as the previous stretch, although we'll feel it more in the actual shoulder muscle. You're going to feel it down your bicep, potentially, if it's tight, right in at the elbow, and then continuing on to the forearm. And we're also going to feel it on the chest as long as you haven't decided to arch your back, as in you haven't slumped that chest down. We must still try and maintain a nice proud chest. And I'm going to ease out of that one there, okay? And then I'm, I'm changing arms. 
I'm changing arms. So again, arm out, plant the <coughs> don't plant the foot, plant the hand. Plant the hand nice and firmly on the ground, and then just roll towards it. But again, this shoulder blade, try and keep it tucked in. Okay, we shouldn't be getting pain on this one. And as you roll, you should still be able to maintain a nice proud chest. Okay, you're standing up tall, you're standing up proud, except you're not, you're lying down. But you get the picture here. Okay, if I start to arch and start to roll that shoulder, I'm going to shorten out the chest muscles and therefore not get a very good stretch. We're trying to lengthen them out. <laughs> I was in the middle of putting my Tesco shop away before this class and then I got distracted because you all started talking about runs and I just ran towards the camera and I've just realised I've left my drawer open, there's bananas lying everywhere and there's a plastic poke. It's going to look terrible on the camera, folks are going to think I'm a right mess. <laughs> and I haven't even filmed my water bottle up. Shambolic. Right, okay, so I'm going for it here. I'll probably not even get the microphone on. Probably not even get that on. Good, and then I'm easing out of that. And as I stand up, I want you to think about what we're doing next, okay? What are we doing? Oh, the microphone's on. Whew. Right. What are we doing? Give us something now. So anyway, we've done the neck into the trapezius muscles, those big meaty muscles here that run down the back. We've done the chest and shoulder. So before we go down, arm, we've had a request for biceps, so we're going to do the biceps. What are you pointing at there? What was that? The biceps. Right, okay, let's go for the biceps. Now, it's a simple one. It's very simple. All I'm doing, I'm standing up tall, I'm standing up proud. I'm always saying that. There's a pattern here. I'm always standing up tall, standing up proud. Shoulder blades together, and I'm pointing my palms up. You could do this one sat down. You could do it sat down, but it's probably better you stand up. It's easier to maintain good posture. Proud chest. My biceps are facing up towards the sky, as are, I wouldn't say my elbows, because my elbows are pointing down, but what would you call that? But, I don't know. <laughs> I hope you can see me and that maybe explains all. Now what I'm trying to do is push my elbows up as if I was trying to bend my arm back the way it's not meant to go. Yep, that's probably a better way of explaining it. Now what I'm going to do to stretch out the biceps is maintain my biceps facing up so my upper arms don't move, but my palms, I'm going to rotate them like so. Okay, so I'm rotating them towards you, towards the camera, towards the front. And as I do that, you should feel, so you'll have to really kind of bend your fingers around as well to really go for it. Now, if you don't feel the stretch in hands as you do that, you've probably done what I'm about to show you now. You've probably rotated the whole arm. You've probably rotated the whole arm around. So biceps, facing the sky, turn round, and then to enhance it, just try and push the elbows up. Try and really overextend that arm as if you're trying to dislocate your elbow. And it's a pretty simple stretch, this one. Now you can, you can really focus, if you really focus on it and you try and relax and you really focus on twisting those hands round, you can get a damn good stretch on this one. Okay, you really can. This is great. Crowd participation. I need to do this on every session. I don't need to plan anything. <laughs> like tonight. <laughs> right, what's next? <laughs> what are we having? You just need to be quicker. You just need to be quicker. Oh, oh for goodness sake. Something, someone, anyone. You are all just standing there wiggling you. Oh, arms in the chair, right. Okay, I'll need to get my chair now. Right, okay, we're going to be doing... <laughs> I'm only kidding. That's a good one. That's my favourite one. So you're going to need a bench. You're going to need a chair. You're going to need a low wall. Anything that you can put your elbows on a raised platform. Okay, and I'm going to get my mat out. Mats out. Simple one. Again, I'm pretty sure most people doing this on the recorded version, that is. These are all over it by now, so I'm not going to over explain it. Get your elbows on your raised platform, and then all I'm doing is moving my knees back. And as a result, by moving my knees back, I've got more weight on my arms, so you should feel that. Now, beginner, advanced, there's no difference. You, if you're a bit tight, this is where we're targeting. We're targeting in here, okay? These big back muscles here that join up kind of in behind the armpit, that's probably where you're going to feel it most. You might feel it in the chest and shoulder as well. Now, beginner, you get to maybe about here, 
when you're feeling a hell of a stretch, okay? A bit more advanced with better mobility, you're just able to get through more. That's the difference, okay? And that's why we're doing it in a raised platform because without the raised platform, you wouldn't be able to get through. So once you've got those elbows on a surface, on the ledge, it should really be your triceps on the ledge, not your elbows. My hands, I'm just gonna put them together and I'm gonna put them behind my head. And that's gonna help lengthen out my triceps and in turn, give those latissimus dorsi a fair old stretch as well. And I'm gonna push my body through, okay? Now, again, if you're tight, you'll be away up here, that's okay, as long as you're getting that stretch. And all I want you to do for the next minute is just focus on relaxing and sinking all your weight into that bench. And again, to enhance the stretch, get more weight on it, just move your knees further back. It will put more weight in your arms and in turn, give you a better stretch. But you must make sure that's either a gradual process if you're pretty tight, just to make sure that you're not fighting the stretch too much, because this one can get pretty uncomfortable. Now, people with good mobility, you're going to feel it too, especially the longer we hold this and everything starts to relax and you start sinking through the arms, you should really be feeling this one. Again, where you feel it is dependent on where you're most tight, but we're probably going to feel it mostly what will feel like outside of the armpit area, going into the upper back, but you'll also feel it in the chest and shoulder potentially. Oof. Breathe. Now again, make sure you're sinking into it, completely relaxed. And again, this does, this one does get pretty uncomfortable. We're gonna ease out slowly there, unless of course you were late to the party getting set up. Um, please hold it a wee bit longer if you want to, okay? So I'm up, I want you to shake out. So now that we've done the chest, shoulders, and the upper back, and the neck, we should maybe feel like that's just flowing a wee bit better. Again, this isn't gonna cure soreness, it's just gonna get you moving, it's gonna cure that stiffness. Okay, so if you are sore, yeah, you'll still feel it when you pull those arms back, but hopefully now you feel like everything's flowing like this. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what are we doing next then? Come on, someone, anyone. <laughs> this, this. Okay, we'll go. We'll go for a wee bit of this then, everybody. Right, okay. So <laughs> Now, I'm going to show you how to do it without a sofa tonight because I can see plenty of people aren't sofa bound. So if you've got a sofa, you're going to do this, the hip flexor with the sofa or wall or whatever it is where we're doing that, okay? Now, I always do it this way. You're happy with it. Of course you are. We do it a million times. I'm going to show you how to do it without it for those of you who do not have it, as in a sofa or a raised platform. Now, I would advise if you have got a a means of raising your foot, then go for it. If you don't, then copy me. All I want you to do is get into the lunge position. And then what I want you to do with the hips, you know how I'm always telling your glute bridge to tilt the hips, tuck almost like you're trying to tuck the butt and the hips underneath the body. That's exactly what I'm trying to get you to do on a glute bridge here. So before we even think about doing that, tuck the butt underneath, squeeze the butt just to try and get it under there. And while you're tucking that pelvis underneath the body, then you start pushing the hips through. And as I do that, I should be feeling a stretch, boom, on that hip flexor, okay? You might even feel it more in the groin, it just depends on where you're tight, okay? So again, it's about tilting, tucking the butt and the pelvis underneath the body as you push through, okay? Now, because we don't have that foot raised, you're not gonna feel it as intense, but if you have got the foot raised, good for you. Give yourself a bonus point. But I'm going to show you this way because, again, I always do it with my foot raised. So now I'm giving people a chance to see how to do it properly. Now, I'm really, I'm just trying to lean back because when I lean back, what happens? I put more, put more weight into pushing my hips forward. So I'm really able to lock those hips out. And again, if you do start to feel, uh, I'm not feeling this so good, squeeze the butt. Squeeze the butt, tilt the pelvis underneath and then boom, you'll feel it. Again, right on the leg, the knee that's on the ground, that's the leg we're stretching out here. Now what you can do is you can bring the arms up and what that'll do is help you lean back even more and help you enhance the stretch all the more, okay? That's optional, but try it if you feel like, oh, what, this is even better. How could it possibly be even better? I was enjoying it before, now I'm just taking it to another whole new level. If you feel like that, then that's what you do, okay? Now if you put your arms up above your head and you think, ah, ah, 
okay, as in your upper body's still pretty tight, then you're probably not a good idea because then you'll start taking it away from here, okay? So it's about putting your arms up. Does it feel like it's enhancing it? Yes, hold it there. Does it feel like it's taking it away? Don't hold it there. I'm going to change legs, okay? So, simple. I'll show you through the front this time. Now that it really matters. Nice and tall, nice and proud. If I don't hit the record button after this stretch, someone remind me, please, because I'm going to end up uh, losing half the workout. So I'm tucking. Again, before I even go into this, I'm tilting the pelvis underneath the body. As soon as I do that, I feel it anyway. And then I'm going to enhance it by pushing the hips through and leaning back nice and tall, nice and proud. Again, it's one of them. It's like, it's like stretching the quads out. You have to pay a bit of attention on this one. If, you're, if your mind starts to wander, um, you'll probably lose the stretch. As in, you're not, you really have to kind of apply the pressure the whole way through. It's not like a stress position that you can let gravity do the work on. So now I'm really trying to go for it, okay? And I'm feeling it. Where am I feeling it? You're going to be feeling it anywhere from kind of mid-quad all the way up into the lower rib. And again, we're trying to get the arms up straight. And if that helps, you go for it. For me, it does definitely help. It applies a bit more leverage and lets me push those hips through more. So now I'm getting a... This is, this is, this is like a yoga class now, I think. I think this is, act, this is actually a warrior lunge. This is what a warrior lunge should be like, I'm sure. So again, a good sign of good overhead mobility is you should be able to have your arms up, your, your arms, your arms up over your head, nice and straight, and your shoulders should feel relaxed. If you feel like this, okay, we've still got a bit of work to do in terms of getting tightness out of here, chest and shoulders, okay? Now I'm going to ease out of this. So while we're down here, you can get up, you can shake out, hit that record button. Um, we're going to get into the groin stretch because it just, it just kind of goes naturally from here. So as always, live people, if you're wanting anything, as you feel as if you're worried I'm missing something, you know, like that enhanced glute stretch. Don't you worry, I've not forgotten about that. Okay, so we're going to go for the kneeling groin stretch because we like it. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's simple. And this is one where we just like gravity. We like gravity to do the work. So I've got my knees nice and wide. I'm trying to keep most of the weight. Well, not most of the weight. I'm trying to get as much of my body weight onto my knees as I can. And then all I'm doing is I'm getting on my elbows again. You can, you can have your arms pretty much where you want. As long as you've got that core, uh, core stretch, what am I talking about? That, that groin stretch on the go. So all I'm doing is I'm trying not to let my... In fact, I better show you from the side because here's another valid point. I've been, I keep mentioning it, but there might just be that one person that never got it last time and I might just help them. So I'm just going to keep repeating myself like I have done for six months. So... My, my lower back, okay, if you can see is what kind of happens if we go into this too soon. If you look at my lower back, I'm moving backwards and my lower back's starting to tuck underneath my body and I'm starting to arch my back. Now, what's happened there? Okay, I've got tightness in my groin, yep, but I'm not trying to stretch it out as in I'm not pulling my knees apart anymore. I continue to move, I continue to move, I continue to move. So that tightness is just pulling my hips underneath my body. So I'm not actually stretching out the groin at all. Well, I am to some degree, but not effectively. So what I want you to do is get the back nice and straight, make sure the butt is getting pushed back, and you will, you'll feel it. You'll feel it in the lower back if it does start to tuck underneath, and if it does, that's the point in which you hold it, and you try and pull your knees apart more, and you try and push the butt back more. But again, we don't continue if you start to feel that butt stretch. You hold the butt stretch. You start to feel the butt and hips tuck underneath the body. We hold it at that point. We try to get rid of that tightness that's causing that, and then we move a wee bit further, okay? But that shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen if you do it in gradual stages, okay? So we take it, to, firstly, we take it to the point in which it's sticking. That point in which we almost feel it with a maximum stretch. And then we just try and add a wee bit more to it each time. So again, you shouldn't feel like you've got too much weight on your arms there. You should just feel like you're lightly supporting your weight, but most of it's on your knees. We're staying relaxed. I'm not pushing my knees into the ground. They're staying nice and relaxed. Everything just feels like it's going to sink into the ground and gravity is just pulling me down while I stay nice and relaxed and breathe. Good. So really go for it now. We're going to hold it for another 20 seconds, that is. And I'm going to, I'm going to really go for it now. This is the point in which you're taking it. It's really uncomfortable, but you're still relaxed, okay? You're just going for it but you're staying relaxed. Good. 
Good. And yot, yot. Okay. I want you to stand up now and walk around a wee bit and just let the blood flow back into the legs after we've been kind of stationary for a wee while. Get a wee drink. Don't be, don't be rolling about. Let's get, let's get up. Okay, I'm, I'm going to fill my water bottle up and shut that drawer because it's bugging me. Okay, so what are we doing next then? It's back to you. It's back to the people, the people's voice. What are we having? Who's that? What? What? Who was that? Elaine, what'd you say? Lower back. Lower back. Let's do it. Lower back and then Trisha, I saw you doing this. So I presume that's the towel hamstring stretch. <laughs> I'll do that next. So we'll hit the lower back up. Now what we will do with the lower back is we're good multifunctional stretch, okay? In which we're going to get a good, a good, um, what's the word? Good value for money with this stretch. So I'm lying on my back. Don't go too far ahead of the game because it might not be the one you think. Feet together, knees together, arms are out to the side. Get the set up right. I've got my shoulder blades pinned together. I've got my arms out to the side and I'm going to rotate my legs away from my body as far as I can. Then, keeping the opposite shoulder pinned to the ground, I'm going to straighten out the top leg and then the leg below, I'm going to slide it away. I'm just sliding it out of the way, so now this leg's fully just kind of hanging out there. And then with my arm, I'm going to grab just above my knee. You'll feel a bit of tendon in there. Grab a hold of that tendon, you tuck your fingers in behind it, and then pull the leg up. Okay, now all I want you to do is pin the hand down. So pin the hand down. Pin the leg down with a hand while twisting your torso in the opposite direction. Once you're in that position, now obviously I'm looking at the camera, I'll be, you should be looking the other way. What I want you to make sure that you are, once you get into this position, is completely relaxed. Okay, because this is the one where we're trying to hit it in here. Okay, you're going to feel it in the hip area, into the glutes, and again, if your lower back's tight, you're going to feel it a lot in your lower back here. But we must relax. I want you to focus on your deep breathing. Bring the leg a wee bit higher if you like. Play around with the position, but then make sure you're completely relaxed into it. Nothing's tense. Nothing's fighting it. That hip joint is completely relaxed and I'm just sinking into the ground while twisting away from that leg. So this is a damn good stretch. If you've got tightness in your lower back, you'll feel it now. But either way, if you don't, you're still going to get a good bit of stretch on that hip. Into the glutes. Again, try and really focus on pinning that leg down and twisting away from it. You might not feel that you can enhance this, but you absolutely can. Pin it and twist away more and more. But again, you'll only feel it if you relax. Good. Nicely done, everybody. So I'm going to ease out, ease out slowly. So it's hitting your lower back big time, that one. If your back's tight, you'll feel it. If your back's not tight, you might not feel it as much. Well, you might feel it when you come out of it. But it very much is stretching out your lower back area. Okay, now we're going to go for it again on the opposite side. So knees together, ankles together, twist. And it's important we keep, we keep or at least we try our absolute best to keep the opposite, opposite, geez, oh, the opposite shoulder pinned to the ground. And then I'm straightening this leg out on top, sliding the bottom leg away so that now, yep, I've got that stretch on. And then with that hand, I'm going to grab behind my kneecap roughly where I feel all those tendons, stick my fingers in there and then pull it down and twist away, okay? So I'm twisting away from the stretch. Now, it might take you a wee bit to get the right stretch. Get that leg a wee bit higher. You might find if you pin it and you pull it a wee bit higher, then pin it and then twist, you get a better stretch, okay? You might find that. So I want you to get the best out of this you can. Once you've got the setup, it's twisting away and then it's just focusing on your breathing and doing what I'm saying about trying to sink into the ground. Make sure all the muscles are completely relaxed. Nothing's tense here.
Good, and again, test and adjust. Can you move your leg a wee bit higher? Can you get a better stretch on? Can you pin that leg more? Can you twist away more? It's very easy just to lie here and chill out, but try to proactively bit, bit, bleh, enhance the stretch. And you are relaxed. You're trying your best to be relaxed. Good, and then I'm bringing that leg back in, slowly. Oh, hit, setting up. Right, okay. Get your towels, get your resistance bands. If you've got a resistance band, make sure it's a thick one. We're gonna go for the hamstrings. So that leads us on. In fact, you know what? We're kind of skipping one. Hang fire, but get it anyway. Get it anyway so it's to hand. Get a sip of water and uh, we'll get the glutes done because it feels like we're missing out if we don't do the glutes now. I'm going to give you the option. You can do the enhanced glutes or... Only joking, you're doing the enhanced glutes. Like it or lump it. <laughs> okay, we're going to do it. We know, I know. I know it can be pretty uncomfortable for people, but the more we do it, the better we get at it, okay? It can't be all fun. Well, it can. Okay, so, what am I doing? Leg out, 90 degrees, sit on the hip. Pin the foot with a hand, as in pin it, push down on it. And then all I'm doing is getting this up onto my hands, getting that other leg behind me, and I'm just centering my body on top of this leg. So I'm getting up on top of it, centering myself. And then once I've found the center, keep pinning that foot, get the knee back down. And if you are tight, you're gonna feel it pretty much straight off the bat here, okay? You're trying to get, oh, I love this one. See everybody's face, he's nice and relaxed. <laughs> okay, so I'm pushing down. That knee, if you are really tight, just be careful, okay? We don't want to be putting strain on that knee, and you'll know you're putting strain on it because it'll not feel right. Yep, you, you'll just know. Don't be hurting yourself on this one. So part one is just getting on top. Yep, now if you're able to, all I'm trying to do is think about this hip. So this hip, I'm trying to relax it, and I'm trying to let gravity sink it down in towards the ground, and I'm slowly applying more and more of my body weight onto that leg. Okay, so I'm trying to transfer some of the weight off my arms because again, if you're pretty tight, you'll probably find you're pushing your arms in to try and take some of that strain away. But you must focus on just relaxing and you're gonna feel it, you're gonna feel it relax. You're gonna start to feel it really stretching in at the hips and at the glutes. Now, if you're able to, all I'm trying to do is enhance it so you can get the arms down. Okay, you can walk the arms out if you like. You can get onto the elbows. You can get the arms out in front of you. Play around with it, okay? You know the stretch. We've achieved that now. So now I'm looking at ways to enhance it. I'm looking for pockets of tightness. So I'm, try I'm trying. If you're going to move, I'd move towards the knee. I wouldn't really encourage you moving away because you're just going to lengthen everything out going that way. Not lengthen it out, shorten it. So I'm trying to get down. Almost like you're trying to get the chest towards the ankle, chest towards the calf, chest towards the knee. Find ways to enhance the stretch and just explore it a wee bit, okay? It's not about holding that one position. Now, when I'm telling you, I keep saying this because it's important. When you are moving around and trying to find pockets of tightness, I'm not easing out of the stretch. I've still got that main stretch there, but by moving, I'm going, oh, that's a wee bit tight. I'm going to get stuck into that bit for a wee while. Then I move over here, okay? But I'm always keeping that stretch on my glutes. Now, the left leg for me always feels good, okay? I always feel, yeah, I've got good mobility. And then I do the right leg, and it's hell. It's hell enough. Again, I wish I knew why. I'm sure someone would be able to tell me somewhere in the world. Okay, so I'm changing legs, everyone. So I'm changing legs. Now, again, this is where you're going to see what to do when it's real tight. Because this side always takes me a wee while to get into it. So I'm pinning that foot, and again, I'm pinning it because otherwise... When I start putting that body weight down on it, you're going to find that foot starts sliding towards you because it's so tight. So we don't want that. That's the reason we're pinning it. So I've pinned the foot, and now I'm just going to get up, almost like I'm trying to get up on a press-up position. Okay, and then this is it now. Straight away, straight away I'm feeling this stretch, and my knee's not even anywhere near the ground. So what do I do? Suck it up. That's what I do. I get that knee down. Yep. And that's pretty horrible. So now I'm kind of just going to try for the next minute and try and just get my body straightened up a wee bit because you can see I'm at a corner kick. Okay, I'm at a corner kick. Yep. Now, if you're holding this going, 
You're not relaxed, are you? You're not relaxed. If it looks like your face is about to pop, you're not relaxed. So you must focus on relaxing into this position first. When you can hold a straight face, that's when you start trying to enhance it. Okay, so I'm playing around with this. I've got a lot of tightness. And I'm just going to try now for me. Again, if your mobility is pretty good, you'll be pretty low. You'll be able to get down onto the elbows. You'll be able to relax into it. Now, I can get down onto the elbows now. But it's too much. Okay, and what do I mean by too much? It's just too much. I will not be relaxed anytime soon. So I'm going to come back up for me and focus on just resting as much weight, trying to slowly sink as much weight onto those, onto that hip, onto this leg as I can. And then, when the time's right, boom, down onto the elbows, and then start your kind of process of holding that main stretch, but trying to just kind of find little areas of tightness. Okay, and try not let that leg, so if that leg starts to slide back, just fix it. Okay, get it back at 90 degrees, that's important. Because if that leg starts sliding back, it'll just, you'll lose the stretch and you'll think to yourself, oh, this is easy now. Good, and he's out of that one, thank goodness. Whew. Right, okay, get your towel. Get your resistance band, and then uh, let's get stuck into these hammies. Okay. If you have got a resistance band, it needs to be something fairly thick, because this is a big, powerful muscle group, okay? A little thin band is not going to work very well at all. Easy stretch. Hook it round the ball of your foot. Pull the band. Keep the opposite leg completely flat on the ground and just lie back, bringing the leg with you. Now when you get into the first position, make sure your knee's locked out completely. Make sure the other leg is completely relaxed on the ground and the knee is not off the ground. Oh, yeah, make sure it's completely relaxed. And all I want you to make sure as well before you start enhancing it is that the foot, the foot also is relaxed, okay? As in you're not pushing that towel or resistance band away from you, but in actual fact with the resistance bands pulling your foot towards you, lengthening everything out up the back of your leg. So all I'm doing, I'm lying back, I'm lying back, I'm lying back. I'm only lying back once, I don't know why I said it three times. And then I'm trying to bring this leg further back. Okay, that's what I meant to say three times. I'm bringing the leg back, 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 back. Okay, now again, it's quite soon into this one, you'll feel a pretty decent level of discomfort, it's safe to say. However, Rest assured, you can probably go a lot further than you are. So I've got that initial bit, and then I'm just trying to hit, move it back a wee bit more. Try to relax in this new level of discomfort. Once I feel I'm pretty relaxed, hit, I move it back a wee bit more. Okay, this is pretty awful, but I'm still relaxed. Okay, I'm not fighting the resistance band. My foot's relaxed. It's getting pulled towards me. My knee's still locked out. Yeah, I go again. Okay, and just keep that process going. Don't lose that good locked out knee, relaxed leg feeling. Okay? Otherwise, we're not lengthening out the hamstrings. So again, you work through that process. And it's, it's down to you. Okay, the more you put into this, the more you're going to get out of this one. But there is a lot of discomfort. And like I've said, and like I say every time we do it, you could probably go further than you really are. but you must be relaxed, okay? Sure, you might move it and it's uncomfortable, you're not quite relaxed, but you must then relax into it before you enhance it anymore. Good, and then I'm going to change legs, so come up gradually, and then just simply shake out the arms, probably a good idea to shake out the arms, hook it round, other foot, Complete same again, okay? It's not a complicated stretch. It's pretty obvious what we're trying to do here. We're lengthening out the back of the leg. So that other leg is just lying completely rested, locked out on the... F not locked, well, yes, locked out, but completely... Yeah, yeah. Completely relaxed. Oh, what's the word? Relaxed. Okay, and now I'm pulling this band or towel towards me, down towards me. My foot's completely relaxed. And then I'm just working through that range, okay? So getting that stretch on. Make sure that that knee does not become unlocked. Otherwise, I've shortened out the hamstring. 
Boah. Again, taking it further and further at your own discretion. Good. And then slowly come out of that one. Beautiful. Nicely done. Right, we're going to get into the quads, yep, but rather than do it standing up, we're going to try it, we're going to try it lying down, let's see if this works, let's see if this works, so I'm going to lie down, and I want you to imagine, it's exactly the same principle as we do when we're standing up here, okay, so what I'm doing first is getting my knees, get my legs together, and then I'm going to bring this foot up, so I'm bringing my right leg up, Going to grab where the laces would be tied. If you've got laces on, grab the laces. If you don't, then, then imagine you do. And then all I'm going to do, keeping the knees together, pull the foot towards the bum, then push the hips down. And as a result, we should be getting the quads here. Okay, now you have to pay attention with this one. You need to really pull that foot to the bum, then push the hips through. So I want you to try and push the hips through as if you're at the top of a glute bridge. Now, if you want, you can bring that other arm back as well and just really go for it. But this is, a, this is a stress position because you have to push the hips through, yep, to be able to get those quads stretched out. So it's not enough just to grab the foot. You have to try and lock those hips out. So it's almost like doing a glute bridge Superman type thing. Yeah, yep. If you can't do this, stand up. Okay, if you can't grab your foot, just stand up. I should have said that at the beginning. <laughs> but again, this just allows us to kind of relax, pulling that foot towards us, letting gravity help us do so, while also pushing the hips through, okay? You have to be thinking about doing that right about now. Good, ease out. If you have to, get up. If you don't, let's get into the next leg. Okay, so all I'm doing, I'm pulling that foot up towards me, grabbing a hold of the laces, pulling it in. Oh, oh man, I think I'm gonna get cramped. Okay, so get, get those legs together. Pretty horrible, eh? The other leg was all right. This one's, this one's not nice at all. What's going on? Falling to bits. So again, it might be a bit of faff. It may not be the most relaxed or dignified of positions to begin with. But then you can slowly start to relax into it a bit more. There we go. Okay, so for me there, getting that leg was a lot harder than the other side. But now I'm there. Got rid of that initial tightness. Now I'm getting that stretch. So again, you really have to focus on pushing those hips through. Push those hips through, squeeze the butt. Good, slowly, oh, he's out of that one, everybody. Okay, right, geez, oh, we're flying through it. There we are, maybe we're doing well. Right, okay, leads us on nicely. We're now down onto the lower legs. That was a disaster. We're getting onto the knees here. This is the one where 
Don't do this very often.